I mean, what do you think one of the biggest health issues affecting women are? I mean, from my point of view, I can tell you this as a heart specialist. I mean, if a woman is hypertensive, she has high blood pressure. Um, I worry a lot about that in women because more women than men are developing high blood pressure today. And I don't know if you see that in your practice, but in my practice of cardiology, not only did I see more women with high blood pressure, but I see women with uh, what we call diastolic dysfunction. In other words, these are women who have high blood pressure, Brianna. They're in their 40s and 50s. And, and they come in and they say, Doc, for some reason, I'm having more fatigue. Uh, I'm doing the laundry and I'm, and I'm short of breath. I climb up the stairs and I can't catch my breath. Something is different. I take their blood pressure and they have, a little, they have high blood pressure. Yeah. Um, I'll, t I'll, I'll t go into the history. I'll do an echocardiogram. And what they have is echocardiographic findings of diastolic dysfunction, which means, in other words, when the heart is filling with blood during the resting phase, diastole, it struggles a little bit. And that's due to the high blood pressure in women. And that's why a lot of women today are, are developing the, these symptoms. And I'll tell you, the Women's Health Initiative, I wrote about it in my book, and I got this um, new chapter in cardiology coming out on women and heart disease. And even the Women's Health Initiative is privy to this information because women in their middle age of life, when they're going through menopause, and you know more about menopause than I do, so women going through the menopause, they tend to get more hypertensive. What do you have to say about that? No, I think your point is so important, Steve, because I think still on women's radar is breast cancer, right? Yes. That's they the don't, number they, one they thing get heart to see. be You're preventative right. of. Yes. And the risk for men is greater prior to the menopausal transition. But after the menopausal transition, the risk for women increases. So I think that's a super important thing to have on a woman's radar as she's going through her menopausal transition because hormones fluctuate, but as they eventually decline, that loss of estrogen has many unfortunate changes in some biomarkers for a woman's body that can leave her more susceptible to heart disease. So as those things are changing, it's important to watch those biomarkers. As you said, right, um, blood pressure is an important thing to be monitoring and optimizing. You know, we see changes in fat and weight distribution. And so doing being on top of that and being proactive in um, optimizing those things for a women, woman will help her not be as vulnerable. Oh, yeah. And especially insulin resistance. I mean, that's another really serious risk factor in women. In fact, if a woman has insulin resistance and hypertension uh, has hypertension at the same time, um, I worry about women, especially these women who become diabetic and are hypertensive. They get, you know, alarmingly, really alarmingly high triglycerides. I saw this so many times, Brianna, in my practice where a woman would be borderline diabetic, have a high hemoglobin A1C, just borderline, and all of a sudden, triglycerides of 250, 300. And uh, when the HDLs go down and the triglycerides go up, uh, you know, that's a serious risk factor for coronary artery disease as well. But I want to get back to what you said about breast cancer. You're absolutely right. You know, women fear breast cancer. They don't think they're going to get heart disease. But heart disease, you know, one in three women one in two and a half to three women come down with heart disease, you know, in their lives, as opposed to one in eight women with breast cancer. So I'm, I'm really glad you mentioned that. That is that is really, really important. Yeah, absolutely. And so I think during this time in a woman's life is such a great time to be proactive, to look at those different biomarkers and start as they start creeping up or we see slight changes that maybe weren't there before menopause, that's the time to intervene, right? Before symptoms start. Because as we've talked about before, some of the um, symptoms that come along with heart disease for women are, aren't as overt as they are for men. They're more silent. And so a woman could be going longer with some um, symptoms of heart disease that are leaving her more vulnerable and we didn't know to intervene sooner. Exactly. And that, and, and again, that's diastolic dysfunction in these women who just have a little shortness of breath. I mean, that's amazing, Brianna. I saw so many women with DD, you know, it's diastolic dysfunction, you know, they're hypertensive and uh, 
it's amazing. The, the, there's sort of a trifecta that I saw here. I saw women on non-steroidals, Advil-like drugs, you know, yes. uh, ibuprofen, those types of drugs, um, and women going through the mental policy years yep. and hypertensive. I said, that, and this is like an unholy trinity. A lot of women don't realize, but when you take these non-steroidals, uh, it, can, it can have a serious impact on the kidney. And uh, a lot of women can be can become hypertensive just from taking a lot of non-steroidals. And again, hypertension or high blood pressure is the leading cause of diastolic dysfunction where the heart struggles, you know, as it's filling with blood. So um, because women take a lot more pain medications than men do because, I, you know, I, of, of all the issues of menstruation, et cetera, et cetera, you know more about that than I do. But I think we need to at least show women that um, – if they are taking these non-steroidals and they're hypertensive and they're diabetic, I mean, this is a serious, you know, like a snowball rolling downhill, uh, especially when HDLs go down, the triglycerides go up and blood sugar goes up and inflammation goes up. And now we now we set the stage for acute coronary artery disease or plaque rupture. Yeah. So it sounds like you're saying super great time to be looking at blood pressure, your lipid levels inflammation levels, all of those things so that we can really be proactive during this time so that yeah, so when a woman, is minimized. Yeah. When a woman reaches the age of around 50, uh, plus or minus a couple of years, when she's going through that perimenopausal, menopausal situation, she needs to wake up. She needs to understand that, okay, you know, for years I've had the fountain of youth hormone. Like right now you have the fountain of youth hormone. You have estrogen. <laughs> Estrogen is the hormone that prevents coronary artery disease. There's no doubt about it. But once the woman goes through perimenopause or menopause and the estrogen levels go down, now she's at risk. And, uh, you know, a, a woman is behind a man about 10 years because of estrogen. In other words, in developing coronary artery disease. But once she hits those menopausal years, she creeps up to men and then she actually can surpass men. In, in, in cardiovascular risk factors. So I guess for the women listening to this show, if you're around 50 years old and your period is starting to wax and wane, this is a time to eat healthy. If you smoke, you got to stop smoking because that's the worst risk factor in women. Check your blood pressure. You know, if you're short of breath, ask your doctor to check you for diastolic dysfunction because it goes unnoticed, you know, even on echocardiographic analysis, unless you know, the doctor is looking for it. So it's important for, you know, women to really assume more responsibility for themselves when they reach those middle age. 